You want to sort out your finances? Well, my friend, there is only one thing that you really need to start with, and that is going back to basics and taking a good hard look at your budget. Now, I know that that does not sound super sexy, but I promise that the transparency you get from having this overview of your finances will give you clarity. And the clarity is the thing that you need, because once you have clarity over what your current financial situation is, it's much easier to set yourself specific goals or point yourself in a direction. Now, in this video, I'm going to introduce you to four different types of budgeting so that once you've set your direction, you have some tools to stay on track. But before I do that, I want to make some important notes. Personal finance is not a one size fits all thing. So remember that while I am talking about four specific budgeting methods, you do not need to choose one and then stick to it to the letter. Find what works for you. That means choose one that resonates with you most and from there be open to tweaking and adapting the system until you find that sweet spot. Here are some thoughts that you can bear in mind as you're listening. What is your general attitude to money? Are you naturally a more frugal person who likes the simple things and are happy to live on a low budget? Or are you more of a big spender or an overspender? In other words, are you interested in optimizing your finances or are you really in a sticky situation and you need to change your habits pronto? Another thing to question is how well you understand your current spending habits. Do you have a rough idea of where you're currently spending money or are you somebody who just swipes your card and hopes for the best? How do you want to approach this? How much time do you want it to take up in your life? Are you looking for a very specific A to B roadmap where you can take meticulous notes along the way? Or are you more interested in a general direction? And then of course, how much time are you willing to spend on this? If you are super motivated and excited for very detailed time consuming efforts, great. If you know that that's not what you're interested in, probably best to go with a technique that is less hands on. Okay, and now we get to the budgeting method. So the first one, the 50, 30, 20 rule. This is a guide for how to spend your paycheck. 50% goes to your necessities, the things that you can't really negotiate on, like your living expenses. 30% goes to future you expenses. So this would be things like your savings fund or your pension. And 20% is fun money. So this is the guilt-free cash that you get to spend on whatever you want. So the good thing about the 50, 30, 20 rule is that you can focus on multiple goals simultaneously. So within that 30% assignment for future you, you have total freedom and ditto for your fun money. Another thing that I think is probably quite good about this method is that because the buckets are broad, there's a lot of flexibility there. So a bit like I mentioned with the fun money, you don't have to know exactly where you're going to spend it as long as it's within that bucket. This also means that it's a less time consuming method because you aren't having to track every single cent. I think that this is a really good method if you are completely at the beginning of your journey and you just want to start. Don't underestimate this point. Starting is so important. Once you start, you gain momentum, you start learning, and this creates a really positive cycle so that you feel motivated to keep going. And that's when you start to see results. One of the downsides of this method, though, is that with these broad categories, you don't have that much structure if you're trying to aim for very specific goals. There's also the uh, small point that wants and needs can be quite subjective. For example, I do not feel like I need new clothes every month, but you might feel like that's a really important expenditure for you. So bear that in mind. Next, we have the zero base budget. This one is borrowed from the corporate world. And the idea is that you start each month from zero. So instead of recycling whatever budget worked for you last month, you're going to start again from scratch. And with this method, you are going to sit at the beginning of the month and assign a spending category to every single dollar or pound that you spend. So you know all of this 
ahead of time and the idea is that this is very very intentional when you have specific goals that you want to achieve so the good thing is this level of control that this method gives you you know where every single little bit of your money is going it also helps you stay focused on those specific goals that you set for yourself but it is super high touch because you are basically redoing your budget from scratch every month and in order for it to work you need to be monitoring your spending really really closely which is obviously going to be pretty time consuming and can also require a lot of discipline for me this system is just way too much the idea of having zero spontaneity in my life when it comes to money is just horrible i also there is no ways that i am going to track every single penny or cent throughout the month it's just not happening but it may be exactly what you need next we have pay yourself first so this technique is basically the complete opposite of the zero base in terms of the time commitment because there is really only one rule here and that is pay yourself first with this method you are setting aside money for future self pensions savings investments that comes off your paycheck on day one and anything beyond that is a free-for-all the idea is that whatever is left over, you can do what you want with, assuming that it's not more than what you have available. This one's great because it is super simple. It also is really good if you have really long term financial goals, because clearly the focus is on those long term planning steps. But the downside is that it's super vague. There's only one rule, which is a good thing, but it could also be a bad thing if you are really in need of some structure. The other thing to point out here is that if overspending is a problem that you have, Pay yourself first is probably not going to help you because you have plenty of opportunity to undo all of your great work at the beginning of the month. If you realize that you're overspending, you can just dip into the stuff that you paid yourself first with and use that. Last on the list is cash stuffing or the envelope method. This one is pretty similar to the zero base budget, but as the name implies, we're looking at cash only. The other difference here is that cash stuffing tends to focus on day-to-day -day expenses less on longer term savings it could be good for you if you actually don't have a load of extra cash floating around and you really your focus is on just getting through the month so similar to the zero base budget this one is also very specific so at the beginning of the month you label your envelopes with your regular expenses and then you assign a very specific amount to each category. So this could be things like your grocery top up or fuel for your car or clothing or entertainment. Things that can be good about cash stuffing. From what I've seen, there is a really strong element of gamification. And if you really dive into this world, people treat it like a hobby. You have something like the penny challenge. There is also something uh, psychological that's very nice about cash stuffing in that the money is really tactile. It's there in front of you. So where there's a disconnect when you use your credit card or your debit card, when you have cash in an envelope and you are taking it out to pay for things, you are very, very aware of how much you are spending. At least that's the theory. Something I've noticed, which could be a good thing or bad thing, is that I see a lot of kind of paraphernalia attached to cash stuffing. So you can buy these little envelopes, then you want to buy your little worksheets. You have binders where you store it all in. Obviously, you could just have a stash of envelopes, but the idea is similar, just on a different spectrum. And that is just that there's a lot of physical stuff around. So for me, that is just, ugh. I don't want to have my house like piled up with envelopes of cash, but you might find this super fun, super engaging, and therefore it could be a great solution for you. Some of the downsides, which I pointed out earlier, are that there is absolutely no consideration really for long-term financial planning when it comes to this method, which might be a situation you're in. In that case, this could work. There's also just the fact that cash can be kind of a faff. So I will say that there are certain bank accounts that mimic this kind of approach. So those are the four budgeting methods that I wanted to cover. But you will probably have noticed that there are elements of each one that may or may not work for you. That's super normal. I'm going to tell you about my method of budgeting that I have arrived at. It is totally made up, but it borrows elements from these methods. What I do 
is a combination of pay yourself first and roughly the 50 30 20. so i am religious when it comes to paying myself first but when it comes to that 30 percent that's the pay yourself first bit everything else beyond that is completely up for grabs and this works for me because i am naturally quite an intentional spender and i'm also not a big spender I live in a rural area. I don't have a lot of expensive hobbies. I know that I'm never going to spend more than I have. And therefore, I don't really feel a need to be so meticulous about exactly how I'm spending my money. But again, you might be different. So for you, you might want to start with the 50, 30, 20 as a guide and then build your zero based budgeting under that umbrella. Or you might want to lean into the pay yourself first principle and use cash stuffing for your day to day expenses. On that note, to uh, happy budgeting and thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.